Okay, I now want to explain a little bit about the calculus of curves in space, otherwise regarded as vector-valued functions. So first of all, the length of the curve R of t, where t goes from alpha to beta. So the length is just the integral of the speed over time. So it's the integral of the length of the velocity vector over time. So this is just like in just like for curves in two dimensions. Now when we're regarding the curve as a vector value function, there's some other things we can do. For example, we can multiply vectors. Actually, there are three different kinds of multiplication. There's multiplication of a vector by a scalar, the dot product of two vectors, and the cross product of two vectors. And this leads to three versions of the product rule. So the first is for a multiplication of a vector by a scalar. So if f of t is a real valued function and r of t is a vector valued function, well then we get a new vector valued function, which is the scalar f of t times the vector r of t. And we can take its derivative with respect to t, and we get analogously to the usual product rule, we get f prime of t times r of t plus f of t times r prime of t. Second, if I have two vector valued functions, r of t and s of t, then I can take their dot product to get a real valued function. And the derivative of this real valued function, as you can probably guess, it's the derivative of one vector time, dot product, the other vector, and then plus plus the um, same term with the other vector value function differentiated. And third, if I look at the cross product of two vector value functions and differentiate, then I get the analogous thing just to replace the dot product with the cross product. Um, now, to prove these, you can expand your components and use the regular product rule for each component. You can also redo the usual proof of the product rule in this context, but I'll skip that. Now here's an example of a problem where we can make use of the product rule. So, example, show that If the curve R of t is on the unit sphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1, then R of t dot R prime of t equals 0 for all t. So here's the solution. So let's look at r of t dot r prime of t. Now, by the product rule and the fact that dot product is commutative, this is one half the derivative of r of t dot r of t. Now remember that any vector dot product with itself is the length of the vector squared. So this is one half the derivative of the length of r of t squared. But 
R of t is always on the unit sphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals one, so its length is always one. So this is one half the derivative of one, which of course is zero. And that's what we were supposed to prove. So the picture um, So here's the unit sphere. And our curve R of t is wandering around the sphere. And at any point here, if this is the point R of t, so remember R of t is identified with a vector from the origin to that point. Then the tangent vector, R prime of t, is perpendicular to R of t. We'll see a little later that what we're saying is that the tangent plane to the sphere is perpendicular to the point R of t. And we can also integrate vector valued functions. So if r of t is x of t, y of t, z of t, then the integral from a to b of r of t dt is a vector. So the first component is the integral from a to b of x of t dt. The second component is the integral from a to b of y of t dt. And the third component is the integral from a to b of z of t dt. Assuming these integrals are defined, which will be the case at least if x, y, and z are continuous functions of t. So what's the interpretation of this? So the usual integral is the area under a curve. So note, this is not the area under the curve. So the most basic reason why it's not the area under the curve is that it's not even a number, it's a vector. Also, it's not clear in this context what exactly the area under the curve mean, means. Um, there is one thing you can do, so we're not really going to need this right now, but we'll understand this better when we talk about calculus of surfaces. So if we have our curve, R of t, we can connect every point on the curve to the origin to make a kind of ribbon like this. So I'll just remark that the area of the ribbon is one half the integral from A to B of the length of the cross product of R of T and R prime of T. If the ribbon is on the XY plane, and this theta coordinate is always increasing, then this generalizes the formula for areas of regions and polar coordinates that we saw before. Um, now what we do have is we have a version of the fundamental theorem of calculus. In fact, this just follows by applying the fundamental theorem of calculus to each component, it says that the integral from a to b of r prime of t dt, assuming that r of t is differentiable, is r of b minus r of a. And the way you can use this is, for example, you can integrate velocity to recover a change in position.
you can also integrate acceleration to obtain the change in velocity.